Tonight on WTOP 10 Nightly News, athletes are getting involved in community service, what they are doing to connect with the Oswego community. And campus is honoring students whose parents didn't attend college, how the school is celebrating. Plus, SUNY Oswego is promoting safety training, what you can do to be prepared in case of emergencies. WTOP 10 Nightly News starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Brianna Saunders. I'm Seth Appleby. Polls closed yesterday night and results are in. Onondaga County Executive Ryan McMahon has secured a second term, beating the Democrat Bill Kinney by 24 percentage points. In local news, Oswego has elected a new mayor as Billy Barlow moves on. Oswego Common Council President Rob Corradino, who ran unopposed, will succeed him. Here with more about the local election is our reporter, Quinn Galuski. Quinn? Thank you. It's November, meaning that it's election time. Local elections took place just yesterday. Oswego has just elected a new mayor. His name is Rob Corradino, a 68-year-old Republican who ran unopposed. The current mayor, Republican Billy Barlow, voluntarily chose to walk away from politics despite being in a good position to move up in his career. Barlow states that he would rather stay in Oswego and be a service to the public outside of elected office. While in office, he was able to make executive decisions that he may not be able to make as governor. He also states that he would call himself a centrist, and politics are usually skewed to the extreme right now. So it's a difficult time to be a moderate. A bigger election occurred yesterday in Onondaga County. Incumbent Republican Ryan McMahon has won the Onondaga C County exe executive seat for another four years. He was challenged by Democratic legislator Bill Kinney. Kinney claims that he knew he couldn't win, but didn't want McMahon to run unopposed, especially because he didn't support many of his policies, including plans for an $85 million aquarium. The big presidential election is happening next year, so don't forget to register to vote. Quinn, thank you. The Campus Safety Advisory Committee is inviting all students, faculty, and staff to complete a training in Brightspace. The training is to teach members of the campus community the standard response protocol. It's meant to help the community stay safe and prepared in the case of an on-campus emergency. There are also in-person trainings available. To schedule an in-person training, you can contact the Chief of University Police, Scott Sways. Today is National First Generation College Celebration Day. To celebrate, students pick up stickers and buttons in the Murano Campus Center throughout the day. The fun continued at the Penfield Library, where students, faculty, and staff gathered for a first generation student social. People enjoyed pizza, games, while learning more about First Gen Student Club. Congratulations to all first generation students here at SUNY Oswego. And this weekend, more than 400 student athletes, coaches, and administrators came together to serve members of the Oswego community. People involved in Laker athletics ranked more than 50, raked more than 50 yards for senior citizens in the community. It was the 18th year of the community service event. According to a press release, community members expressed their thanks to everyone who helped rake their yards. And the athletics say that it plans to bring the event back next year. There's been lots of leaves on the ground lately, but tomorrow you may be stepping around in puddles and leaves on the way to class. Let's take a first look at your forecast with Storm Team 10 meteorologist David Rienzo, who joins us from outside the Murano Campus Center. Howdy inside. Um, I'm outside bearing the elements right now. There's a little bit of rain and uh, just earlier there was some hail. You can still see a little bit on the ground right now. This mixed precipitation will continue. We're actually in a winter weather advisory thanks to the National Weather Service, and this will continue into tomorrow morning. I'll have more about uh, the weather tomorrow and any strong winds that you may be experiencing on your way to class, but I'm gonna make my way back inside, and but first, I'm gonna send it to the desk. A Lepser woman will spend a year in prison for stealing $570,000 from Wegmans. According to the assistant U.S. attorney, that woman is Alicia Torres. The assistant U.S. attorney says Torres fraudulently processed around 350 credit card refund requests in customers' names, and those requests were made for the fake amounts. 
The assistant U.S. attorney says it happened over the course of nearly 10 years, starting in 2014 until February of this year. Once the refund requests were approved, Torres then paid the amount to herself through Wegmans point of sale system. Still ahead tonight, Harlem has a new notable councilman with the story you may have heard before. Plus, New York State is investing millions into upstate airports, a preview of the upcoming improvements. Say, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm Team 10. Roll it. Say, President Stanley, whenever there's bad weather, who would you turn to? I'd turn to Storm Team 10. No, right but here. you've got to say it like this. Storm Team 10. Say it with me. Storm, Storm Team 10. Roll it. Hi, welcome back. I'm meteorologist David Rienzo. Right now in Oswego, it is still raining. I was just outside. I'm glad to be back inside. Uh, it's a little chilly out there. I can attest my fingers are a little cold. Uh, we've got this east wind from the 8 mile per hour from the east. It's making it feel a little bit chillier than it would have. Dew point is 23. It might be a little higher now. I made this a little minute ago um, thanks to that rain. This is that rain that we're looking at right now. It is sweeping across most of the western New York and it's going to keep pushing into the, into the west as the night continues. We're going to be seeing this rain for the rest of the day, some mixed precipitation. This is that winter weather advisory. We're seeing some mixed precipitation, and the roads may be a little slippery tonight, including tomorrow morning. So when you're on your way to work, you may need to take extra caution when you're driving. Slow down and really turn those wipers on. This is for tomorrow. Some thunderstorms are in effect um, in eastern New York western New York and this will carry into us we may hear some thunderstorms in the early morning around 8 9 a.m. tomorrow it's gonna be a little mild thanks to this um, low pressure system the winds will pick up as that moves 95% um, chance you lose your umbrella I was fortunate enough to keep mine but the winds are pretty strong with some high gusts too, 28 to 36 miles per hour tomorrow so when you're carrying your umbrella it may just you know invert itself thanks to these strong winds this low pressure, as I was just mentioning, is going to carry from around Ohio. It's going to move right about to over us tomorrow morning. And then as the day continues, it's going to fly over here and down here. It's going to break up a little bit. 
It's going to give us some rain tomorrow, mostly in the morning. As the day continues, it, it should die down. Thunder, as I mentioned, in, only, in the, only in the early mornings of the day, and then it should settle. Friday, you've got a little slight chance in the p.m. You've got some pretty dry weekends to look forward to, but there is a slight chance of snow on Sunday. Monday is a little dry as too as well. Seven-day forecast. Tomorrow and Friday will probably be the warmest days that you'll experience until it just dips down this weekend. Monday will be partly sunny, sunny as will Tuesday, and Wednesday will get a little bit more of a warming. So expect some warm, cold temperatures and some rain for the next few days. But that's my full forecast. Back to the desk. The Albany International Airport will be undergoing a $60 million revitalization. A new video rendering shows the changes. The improvements include an energy-efficient LED lighting system, a new children's play zone, an expanded security checkpoint, upgraded airline ticketing, baggage claim, and concession array areas, and more. The Albany International Airport was one of the nine awarded a total of $230 million as part of the Upstate Airport Economic Development and Revitalization Competition funding. The Greater Binghamton Airport is also receiving money for renovations and has released mock-ups of the upgraded building will look like. Governor Kathy Hochul says that the $32 million will help the make the airport the perfect welcome to the southern tier. The airport will feature a new 64,000 square foot customs and border protection facility, parking revenue control system, and redevelopment of the airport road approach. A half century of giant pandas in our nation's capital comes to an end. Laura Aguirre brings us more on the panda's departure. Like seeing them in person. But now the tumbling, crowd-pleasing, bamboo-eating giant pandas at the National Zoo will be seen no more. In recent weeks, visitors have been flocking to DC to say goodbye. I thought it was a good thing to take him out of school for. You get just so attached to them and so invested in them, but I'm sure they're going to have a good life overseas. Wednesday morning, the bear trio was carefully transported to a waiting FedEx plane for a 19-hour flight back to China. It's a program first started in 1972 during the Richard Nixon presidency when two pandas were gifted to the states by China's then chairman, as a symbol of improving diplomatic relations. But in recent years, friction points have escalated over issues like human rights, trade, Chinese spy balloons over the U.S., and Beijing's tightening embrace with Moscow. Moscow Zoo received a new pair of pandas from China in 2019, with both leaders side by side for the bear's public debut. Now only four Chinese pandas remain in the U.S. at the Atlanta Zoo. Their contract expires next year, and no word from China on any extension, which could bring what's been known as panda diplomacy to an end. The National Zoo is calling Wednesday's departure a hiatus, and panda fans are hopeful their beloved bears will one day come back. Hopefully we get new ones, a new family to fall in love with, too. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. An exonerated member of the so-called Central Park Five is set to join the New York City Council. Author and activist Youssef Salam ran unopposed to represent the neighborhood of Harlem and formally won the seat in an election Tuesday. In 1989, he and four other black and Latino teens were wrongfully convicted of raping a white jogger in Central Park. The case landed the innocent teens in prison until DNA evidence cleared them. And when WTOP 10 Nightly News continues, a popular chicken producer is releasing a new chicken feed. But it's not for chickens. Find out who it's for. And when a 34-year-old man's lungs failed, doctors use an unexpected technique to save him. Find out how it worked. I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. <laughs> oh,
Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. In consumer news, doctors say breast, plant, breast implants were key in saving a 34-year-old man's life. Earlier this year, Davy Bowers' lungs stopped working. While Bauer was active, he was a smoker. In 2014, he switched to vaping, thinking it was a healthier alternative. But both smoking and vaping can leave lung tissue inflamed, making the organ more susceptible to infection. Bauer's condition worsened so much that doctors determined his only hope was a double lung transplant. Still, one doctor says vaping was not directly responsible for the lung failure. Here there were no direct causative role in vaping causing uh, David's uh, lung failure. Vaping is very bad for lungs and we know that vaping will, can cause injury to the lungs. And also to emphasize that uh, flu uh, can cause fatal outcomes, can be life-threatening infections, and that's why we need to get the flu vaccine every year. He was transferred to Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago, but Barr was too sick for the transplant. Surgeons removed his lungs, waited for the infection to clear, and for donor lungs to become available. But in the meantime, doctors needed to keep Barr's heart intact. That's where the breast implants came in. They used double D implants inside his chest cavity to temporarily keep the heart in place. Just a few days later, surgeons removed the placeholder breast implants and inserted the donor lungs. The team at Northwestern told Bauer's family that it was by far one of the most complex cases they had ever seen. Bauer was released from the hospital in September and is continuing with therapy at a rehab facility. Working under the sun could be a major cause of skin cancer worldwide. That's according to new data from the World Health Organization and the International Labor Organization. The two United Nations agencies jointly announced the estimate, estimates that link working outdoors in the sunlight to non-melanoma skin cancer. The report says nearly one in three deaths from non-melanoma skin cancer are caused by ultraviolet radiation from outdoor work. But the study's author says that employers and policymakers can take steps to reduce workers' ris risk of getting exposed to UV radiation. This includes providing shade to outdoor workers and shifting hours away from peak sunlight. In consumer news, some changes are coming to Airbnb. With more than 7 million listings worldwide, finding that perfect Airbnb can be tough. But now, the vacation rental platform has a list of guest favorites to choose from. The top 10 spots are located all around the world, including a tropical forest apartment in Brazil. There's also a spot geared towards wine lovers in Italy. All of the guest favorites have an average rating of at least 4.9 stars. Purdue is coming out with a new kind of chicken feed, but it's not for chicken. Instead, it's for people. It's a new snack by the chicken company called Chicks Mix. It's an attempt by Purdue to fight concerns about the company's treatment of its chickens and antibiotics in its feed. Purdue says Chicks Mix is inspired by the same vegetarian, antibiotics-free ingredients that Purdue's chickens eat. You can soon try it for yourself. The limited edition snack will be available to order for free on PurdueChicksMix.com starting on November 17th. Coming up in sports, Matt Sheramita has your sports report. Matt, what can we expect this weekend for the Lakers? Thanks, guys. A huge opening weekend for the reigning Suniac champs, plus a recap of a blissful weekend here on the ice. That and more coming up right after the break. 
and it could be your last chance to see one occur for two decades as the next time one will be visible over the continental U.S. He's May 84. Yarrow told police in the hospital that he had pressed the doorbell and waited. They mix with oxygen and nitrogen. They become briefly... What's what's going on? Yeah, it's, dude, this, we go on at like eleven thirty. It's like no. What do you mean no? It's ten thirty. Ten thirty. Yeah, it's ten thirty. Who is ten thirty? Hey, don't touch that. That's my ladder. Hey man. Whoa. Did you know this book was already discounted ten percent? Wow. Wow. Get a closer with that one. Broadcast news. Look at that. Can we go back inside? I, I want to sleep in the studio again. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. and is just beginning on the hardwood. I'm Matt Sheramita with your Wednesday night sports report. Even though we are on the ice, we must bounce things over to the hardwood as the Oswego State women's basketball team takes on the Alfred University Saxons. These two have an even history, winning two games apiece in their four games. The last time these team, two teams met, the Lakers ran away with a 65-57 home court victory. Carly Leo led the charge their last time out, notching 19 points for the Lakers, as well as averaging 11.1 .1 points per game in an exemplary freshman campaign. Leo was also named Oswego State Athlete of the Month for November. These two teams tipped off their rubber match at 6.30 p.m. Game is currently over. Alfred takes home a 51-39 win over the Lady Lakers. We're going to stay on over at the hardwood the, as the Oswego State men's basketball team is coming off a campaign where they finished as Division III quarter finalists. WTOP 10 sports reporter Mike Neckers visited practice today and talked with head coach Jason Leone about his expectations for the season. So the first game of the season, there's just one thing on the minds of the Oswego faithful, basketball. I sat down with Coach Jason Leone to get a little insight on what's to come. I spent a lot of time in gyms growing up, loved basketball, was fortunate enough to have a family background that allowed me to um, go to a lot of camps and spend a lot of time in gyms during my younger years and it sparked my interest in the game and became a player. When I was done playing, I wasn't ready to you know, let basketball go. And, uh, I got a master's degree at SUNY Potsdam and coaching, being an assistant coach there allowed me to offset my costs to get my master's and then kind of off we went. Everything kind of went from there. With five new recruits this season, Leon talked about what they bring to the table. There's Elijah Hardison, provides us with a better defensive shot blocking presence uh, right now, which is something we needed to upgrade uh, in that area. Leon and his players are eager to start hooping and ready to defend their SUNYAC title. Well, there's this fact-finding part of coaching during the season during that happens the where you, know, you don't truly know as much as you think you do about your team until you actually see them play against somebody else and you get some things exposed. The Lakers tip off this Friday, November 10th at 5.30 p.m. versus Cuca College right here in Oswego. I'm Mike Neckers with WTOP 10. 
Thanks, Mike. Along with hosting the SUNY Poly Wildcats this Friday, Oswego State will be home of the Max Seal Tournament, which also features a matchup between the RPI Engineers and the Kiuka Wolves. The Lakers start things off at 7.30 on Friday, with consolation and championship games being played at 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock the next day on Saturday. And let's get things back on the ice, shall we? As the Oswego State men's hockey team takes a day trip to Morrisville to take on the struggling 1 and 2 Mustangs. Shane Bull has a hot hand recently coming off of a nuclear two-goal performance and a 4-0 shutout home win against the Buffalo State Bengals last Saturday. But how about two more for Mr. Bull as he netted two goals in the first period alone earlier tonight. Puck drop at 6.30 as the Lakers improve their record to 4-1 as they uh, took care of business in Morrisville, a hefty 8-2 win. The Lakers don't return here to the Deb until November 18th where they host an eight-ranked Geneseo Knights. And if you're just itching to see more of the greatest show on ice and can't just wait until then, let's reminisce and take a look at the top five plays of the week for the Lakers. We're going to start with number five, France to make you dance. It's Tristan Francis with Oswego's first Suniac goal. His first goal coming off the ACL tear last year. He's loving it. Got, got to feel good for Tristan Francis. We're going to move to number four, though. It's Shane Bull in the corner. I had to slow this down for you. Tyler Flax. Skating down, uh, downhill reel with a lot of speed, pass intended to him. Obviously, he's not going to make it to, uh, to Flack. Bull had other plans. It ends up in the back of the net. He had two goals against Morrisville, another big game for him. We're going to move over to number three now. It's Nolan Barrett, barely creeping in tack zone. Huge wind up, and here we go. Boom! Nolan Barrett with a huge goal, just shooting this from the, the shores of Lake Ontario. Gets into the top corner. Chetty Cheese there for Nolan Barrett. We're going to move over now to number two. <laughs> It's getting really hot here in the dev as Calabufo starts to raise the temp. I mean, really, it's like a saw in here. Uh, well, he's got a goal tonight as well against Morrisville. Calabunga, Calabufo, I guess. And I mean, a little sleight of hand here, too. A little magic. Over the shoulder, Cumber. Here we go. Boop. Right in the goal. We love magic here in Oswego. We got more magic for you. It's Cal Shell, the Wizard of Oz himself. I guess we just throw sticks now in hockey. It's a high IQ play from the recently named D3 Goalie of the Week. He had 17 saves in this one. A shutout win for the Lakers over the Buff State Bengals in that game. And that's going to do it for sports. Stick around. We'll be right back after the break. It'll be your last chance to see one occur for two decades as the next time one will be visible over the continental U.S. He's May 84. Yarrow told police in the hospital that he had pressed the doorbell and bleed. They mix with oxygen and nitrogen. They briefly... What? What's what's going on? Yeah, it's, dude, this, we go on at like 11.30, it's like... No! What do you mean no? It's 10.30! 10.30? Yeah, it's 10.30! What do you mean it's 10.30? Hey, don't touch that! That's my ladder! Hey, man! Whoa. Did you know this book was already discounted 10%? Wow! Wow! You gotta close it for that one. Matthew, news. Can you look at that. Can we go back inside? I, I want to sleep in the studio again. in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. The Buffalo Zoo is welcoming new residents and they are hit with visitors. Asali, Briggs, Denny, and Saul are four month old lion cubs. They spend their days cuddling with their mom and roughhousing with each other. The Buffalo Zoo's breeding program is meant to offer hope for the survival of the African lion population. If you want to see the cubs, the Buffalo Zoo is a two and a half hour drive from Oswego. That's our report for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for One Too Many. Thank you for watching. Have a good one, everyone. Oh, oh no.